co-host, the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller. Matty, good morning to you. Good morning. And the tallest coast we've ever had at six foot seven, Jonathan Bod 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 Bodwell. Good morning, Rob. What did you think about the NBA announcement that they're going to do their skills competition on glass? Have you heard this? It's going to be a glass top surface that they do the skills competitions on, not the all-star game itself, but the skills competition. I, I guess it opens up all sorts of electronic possibilities, like a video game, as to what they can do now. Yeah, that, that's what I got out of the story. I heard it this morning as you aired that, that piece, and it seems like underneath of the glass will be some kind of video thing so that, I guess, during the competition, they can put up whatever the court is supposed to look like, yeah. but then in between or whatever, they can show, I'm sure, highlights or do all kinds of stuff my biggest concern would be glass is slippery you know what what type of shoe are you going to have to wear that you're not potentially sliding around on this glass i'm sure they've accounted for that it's i mean they just have to make stuff up it's all about <laughs> showmanship i mean let's just get back to playing basketball not gonna happen johnny i, was, I mean days are gone, the baby. all-star game where it's what the first the three quarters to don't, return to no, the first three quarters don't matter the all-star game and then at the end you go to like 50 or something i mean it's just none of it makes any sense it was the better all the all-star game stays on the wooden court it was better these but, other no, but it, was, it was better when they used to just play a game <laughs> and it's I mean, it's all. I don't know. I'm. I. I love You're the NBA. You're sounding like I'm an old a, cranky man now. Well, look at this beard, Rob. I am an old <laughs> cranky man. You've got to change with the times, Johnny. I have changed with the times. Got to change and with I the still, times. to this day, do not like LeBron James. The times have not changed that much since '03 when he got in the league. You love him or you don't. That's the uh, the thing with him. Yes. Uh, you know, the big question here is not how are they going to play on glass. The big question is when is this area going to get a Catholic high school. Are we any closer to that today than we were yesterday? The only person I know who can answer that question is sitting in studio with us right now. She is the principal of St. Joe's, Maria Bird. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. <laughs> how, did, how did you like that uh, buildup for you there? Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much. It's impressive, huh? I, um, I thought it was just a private thing that only my parents have a desire for this place, but I'm learning little by little that the whole community is hoping and rooting for mm -hmm. um, for this to come through. So. Yes, so with uh, St. Marie Goretti no longer an option locally, Correct. which a lot of folks in the panhandle used as an option for yes. a private Catholic school. What's the reality of St. Joe's? And that's just it. We were um, not in a hurry to do this, but, you know, kind of striking what the iron is hot right now with Goretti closing and us having our graduates, eighth grade class, not having a place to transition to other than the public school system, which is for some of our parents is not a choice. It's mm -hmm. not what they desire for their children. Then that left us with um, either doing nothing or solve the problem and fill in the need, you know, mm -hmm. and and devoid. And I, it's being uh, wonderful. We put out a survey. Our school would just say, you know, let's see what folks think. Is this too soon? Do we have the um, square footage to do it, the land, uh, uh, the resources to do it? Let's see um, what they think. So we had 294 responses just from our local community. Most of them Berkeley County. That was about 200 and change Berkeley County and a few from Jefferson County. A couple from Winchester, Maryland, Pennsylvania. And it was 96%, 90, almost 97% of approval. Please, almost begging, if you can read some of these open-ended responses, uh, please do this, mm -hmm. you know. And I think there's support. There are, so at this point, the um, answer, the shorter answer is we're waiting for Bishop's Blessing because this is a major step. Um, this was not in the plans, in anyone's radar. We put the survey before Christmas after we heard the sad news that Maria Goretti is no longer going to be with us, you know, in Hagerstown. Mm -hmm. so, it's sad. Very upsetting. Um, some of our teachers graduated from Goretti. Mm -hmm. A lot of the local folks attended, you know, they're having a very strong academic year. I, um, I'm friends with the principal. And I think Dr. Summers has done a great job. It just came down to um, the archdiocese having to file bankruptcy mm -hmm. and pulling out financial support from them. So very, very, very sad. Well, it's um, I mean, I am I'm a graduate of Bishop Ireton High School in Alexandria. Um, what I have what a was son, your tuition back then, John? Do you remember? Uh, Five thousand, roughly. And uh, one of the problems with St. Maria Grady has, and I'm very. I know a lot of the board members mm -hmm. through the years, and I have a son who graduated from Goretti a few years ago. I mean, it's it's very sad when they when they tore the old building down 
it right. was just a matter of time. And, and I think that was a bad move looking back on it. It was definitely a bad move. Um, they could have moved out for a couple of years, revamped the building, moved back in. Everything would have been yeah. good. Um, not having a Catholic high school. I mean, the closest one is uh, St. John's over in Frederick. Right. Not Let's having a, a hike. <laughs> was a hike. Not having a Catholic school. Winchester, Frederick County, which is a huge county with a lot of a lot of middle class. Washington County not having a school and not having a school here. I mean, I think it's the perfect time for Martinsburg to become the hub of Catholic education. I think it's. I mean. I, I think Catholic education, I think private schools work. I mean, they're not for everyone, but it, it's something, I mean, I, I know looking back, I mean, the education that I got, the network that I built through Bishop Ireton, I mean, I, I would not probably not be where I am today. I mean, they, they kept me in line. I mean, I was, I was not very focused. I was always running late and not very focused. Good and to they, see you <laughs> fixed that. <then>. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, we, if, if not, I'd be perfect. No, but I, um, I, the void and, and yes. talking to, and, I, and I'm in a lot of groups with St. Maria Goretti parents and stuff like that on, on Facebook and other social medias. I mean, it's not having the access to a, a, a Catholic education, to a strong Catholic private school. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it's going to cost. I hope the bishop, I hope the bishop understands, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this to the bishop right now. We are the fastest growing part of the state of West Virginia. A lot of West Virginia is, is dying off. A lot of West Virginia is getting small. We are growing like crazy. Let's get a Catholic high school here. Let's build a big Catholic high school over the years. Let's have a huge presence here, which will build their bottom line. Because the more people that go through the Catholic high school, the more people that go to mass, the more people that donate. And the more the Catholic community grows, where we've yes. got a shrinking population and shrinking revenue in the state, this area has it. Maria, Agreed. what needs to happen and what are the uh, challenges to make it happen? Um, so there were several challenges, but, you know, like I said, step one was to see how the community feel. And that was overwhelming. It almost brought me to tears just to just to read parents begging for this to happen. Um, including our own students, but you know, beyond, like like you well said, this is a growing area. So the challenges are where do we put these children, right? As you know, you might not know this, but uh, since I've been here less than two years, we have grown by gaining 70 students. So we went from roughly 340, sure, and today we have 422 students. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have grown. I've seen this over the last 12 months, um, and we have a very healthy waiting list. So this is why last summer we re renovated the parish offices and turning into back to the initial purpose, which was the school. That was St. Joseph School, elementary grades at one point, and now it's currently our middle school. Okay. So we do have a plan. It's a modest plan, but it's a plan that would not involve anything other than purchasing a couple modular units. And um, this will go on the back of the pre-K building, making that a unit which allows us to uh, move pre-K out of the building and receive our middle school back and grant this building freshly renovated to be a modest but seven classroom building high school and this is a beautiful historical building so it wouldn't affect the beauty of the city so that's one way that we can do it for year one you know baby steps and then uh, looking at the future this is not sustainable the space is um, it's not large enough to have a full high school as we properly should if you compare it to the other high schools in the diocese of Will in Charleston which by the way for some who don't know it comprises the whole state of West Virginia. So we do have six high schools, 24 schools altogether. And to be fair, that wouldn't be a, a permanent you know, solution mm -hmm. if we want to grow the way we like hope to grow. Wheeling Central Catholic, Parkersburg Catholic. Exactly. Yeah. It's too bad they got rid compare, of too bad they got rid of the John Street School that they tore that down. So I heard, right. That would have been great to remodel, yes. refurbish. That would have been a heck of a high school. Yes, and there is a lot on Spring Street that um, I've written a letter to these folks who want it. They live in California. I hope they don't care for it as much as we do because mm -hmm. it's touching our, you know, our campus. And perhaps we can manage. I definitely feel strongly that Martinsburg is ready for a Catholic high school, but we're going to have to work through these um, financial hurdles and see how what to it, go about it. What is your current tuition charge at St. Joe's? So um, it depends, $500 difference, but under $8,000. 
You know, we have six something hundred for Catholics, and all, barely over seven thousand for non-Catholics. So very modest, almost half of what already is right now. Would that be the similar um, charge for the high school, or the high school cost? More? So we have a proposal. It's a great question. The high school would not exceed um, ten thousand dollars. The way we have it, some place between low nines and eleven well, at the most fees included. Mm -hmm. So some place in the middle will hope to land under ten grand a year. And that was one of the big errors that Garetti made was their tuition being fifteen, sixteen thousand. I actually researched a little while ago. Bishop Ireton, where I went, is like eighteen, nineteen thousand. Yeah. It's in, it's just outside of Old Town Alexandria, where every house is a million dollars. The DC incomes can you know people can afford that. Yeah. There's a, there's a Catholic high school, and I can't remember what it's called, up into Pennsylvania that's not that far up, um, mm -hmm. that was only about $6,500 because the Diocese yeah. of Pennsylvania was supporting them heavily. Yeah. Um, that a lot of, Goretti lost a lot of people to them. And I, DeLone, DeLone yes, Catholic. DeLone. Okay. Yes. I've heard. Yes. Um, but nine to 10,000, I mean, that's a sweet spot. I mean, that, I there's nothing so. wrong with that. We have to think about our, our population. You know, and the beauty of this is if you are new to private school, now we have, you know, the Hope Scholarship in the state of West Virginia. So these, I already got the amount that they're granting per family. No questions asked, not income based. A forty nine hundred dollars, almost five thousand dollars per child. So a family with three children can receive almost fifteen thousand dollars from the state of West Virginia to put their children in a Catholic school on our school of choice. So I think this has definitely impacted the um, accessibility because now you're looking at a family who wants this, you know, as an alternative education for their children, whether they're Catholic or not, just plain Christians, or just one good old traditional um, family values, you know. If you're that family, then for less than $4,000 potentially, 40 something hundred dollars a year, by the time you receive Hope Grant Scholarship, you can have your child in a Catholic high school. So I think that would be um, an answer to, to many folks' prayers. Maria, you, you mentioned eighth grade students right now yes. who, with Garetti closing, don't have a place to go. In looking at a plan and how this might work, would this go in phases where would you start a high school by only having that ninth grade class and then add the 10th grade and, and it would be kind of a four-year process before mm -hmm. you'd have a full high school? And that's a great question because we certainly um, explore different choices. Mm -hmm. And just looking at the physical capacity that we have, if we add these two modular units, you know, to shift some, some students around, with the classroom capacity, we can do up to 10th on year one. So if we get this blessing and things get in place, um, of course, it'll be a marathon, but I believe it's possible mm -hmm. that we can receive ninth and 10th grade, even if it's a modest class, we are asking right now for a gift from the bishop to support us financially, just enough to hire the administration we need to put those two modular units to free this beautiful newly renovated building for uh, a sta stage one high school, you know, and we will have uh, good capacity for ninth and 10th. So we're trying to go nine and 10th and the following year, 11, 12. So to answer fully, we, I don't think it's fair to just offer, oh, we'll do up to 10th and let us think about it. I think families need to know that we're planning on having a full high school, mm -hmm. that we will go to the 12th grade um, when the time comes, you know, and all things provided. Does, does the diocese own the land that the John Street School was on? I don't know. That's a great question. Well, I, I try to ask great questions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rob has taught me well between the Hall of Famer Matt Miller and Rob. I'm... I, I, I have you. to. What can you do? <laughs> but the office has been great. The office of the bishop has been great. We uh, presented to him, um, you know, with the overwhelming responses. And he mentioned himself, there is some land in Martinsburg. His parents, actually, Bishop Brendan's parents, you know, they attended St. Joseph Parish. And he has a, there's a special place in his heart for Martinsburg. Uh, he's visited us plenty of times. And I, I think this is something, he loves Catholic education. So I don't think it's a matter of whether he wants to support or not. It's just all these logistics. But he has mentioned that there are some, um, the diocese owns some land and buildings throughout the city. So he's willing to look at those. Well, and I mean, it looks like a perfect storm of, of time to do it. I mean, between the 4900 on the Hope Scholarship, St. Yes. Maria Goretti closing down, the fact that, I mean, I've been here since 96. There were oh. roughly 50,000 people in this county. They're now, what, 135,000 and, and growing every day. Yeah. 
I mean, this is uh, this is the perfect the perfect place, the perfect time. Let's uh, let's hope the bishop is uh, hope the bishop feels the same way. Yes. There, what are the odds That's next right. fall that there is a ninth grade option for Catholic education? Well. Um, I was hoping by now I have a, a better answer than this, but we have presented the last condition, which was a detailed budget of how we would spend this seed money. And uh, I know that the bishop was in El Salvador, you know, uh, for work and came back, and then he lost one of the members of his staff, so it, it has delayed this um, this decision. But all things falling into place, maybe this or next week. We're hoping by mid-February we can announce the news. And um, I, I feel like he is in support. It's just this logistics to make sure that, um, you know, we don't want to be like a, like a bad restaurant, a new restaurant that opens <laughs> up and then you get the first bad meal. And then, and you don't you get know, yes. I yes. just don't know how else to put it. We, yeah. we, want, to, um, we want to do things right. And um, the beauty of this is there are some Goretti faculty members that are from town you know we have martinsburg and berkeley county folks traveling to teach already as we speak so there's that talent also that we can capture um i you know so i might be speaking to somebody i hope that um that he is agreeable and that we can make this announcement soon because i believe that we can do it um and let me say, as an Italian, I appreciate your food analogy with that. <laughs> How many eighth, hey, I'm Italian, too. <laughs> How many eighth graders are there? And so am I. How many eighth graders are there? Uh, we have a small class, I think 23, 24. I don't want to lie. I had to look at my Roman today. But um, no, all of them, let's be honest, all of them were not set to go to Goretti, you know. But all together, mm -hmm. we do have 30-something um, students of ours in, in their various, you know, high school grade levels right now at Goretti. So we definitely send a chunk of our students there. Um, those who can afford it. <laughs> this has to be a big enough challenge when you consider the land and the, the buildings, the yeah. education, the teachers, and so forth. A high school adds some extra challenge, I would imagine, because of a lot more extracurricular activities, whether it yes. be bands or sports or whatever clubs and so forth. Yes. Uh, what's the added challenge that that does present? Right. So right now we do have sports, you know, we're in, um, we just won the championship, actually, right. of the, um, I think it's called the Valley Middle Schools. Um, I'm not sure all the acronyms, but um, we just took that, um, that first place. So I'm excited. We do have a program. We do tennis and we do volleyball. And we, but uh, Vic Lupis, I don't know if you know uh, Vic Lupis. He's really well known mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's our athletic director. He's mm -hmm. fabulous. He's still, um, I know, coaching at the various high schools. And we did have a meeting to see what are the possibilities for sports. And, you know, the new... Um, the new law says that if a student uh, is in a private, non you know, non-public school with a sport, wishes to play a sport that this school doesn't offer, that would be us not offering football, for mm -hmm. example, then he or she can uh, go and play for any of the local high schools, you know, that be be beginning on the residency area. So if this student is from Jefferson County, you know, you will have to play there, but you get a one time on your four years. Um, athletic career, you know, in high school, one time to transfer to any place you want. Mm -hmm. So this student will have, I, I think, as good as equal opportunity as any other student in public, um, public schools to play sports if we don't offer the sports. So I feel pretty good. We have a plan already from Mr. Lopez, who gave mm -hmm. me for the sports that we can play in every season of the year. You know, he sits on the board and he's very excited about this. And by the way, I want to give him a shout out because he is our athletic director and receives zero pay. He's not an employee. He's a volunteer graduate mm -hmm. of St. Joseph's School. Oh my. So uh, what he's been mm -hmm. doing for us for years, it, it, it's commendable. What? He, He's fabulous. What Vic's been doing in the community in general between Little League Baseball yeah. and St. Joseph's. He's, yeah, he's, nobody, you know, nobody gives back to the community more than Vic does. Vic's a great guy. I have to agree. And we have him on our side. And uh, he's talked to several folks. And, I mean, I tell you, on paper, he's already built a program. <laughs> so I don't, I don't feel like our, our children will miss out if this comes to pass. Well, and one of the major problems that we had and that other families at Goretti had is getting there. 
I mean, it's so far away. I mean, they had bus service sometimes, but not if your child played a sport and different things. I mean, if you have 30 or so kids from St. Joe's at Garetti currently, can you imagine how many more would have gone if it wasn't for the logistics right. and the fact that, you know, if you're somewhere around 5,000 less and you take in that Hope Scholarship, right. all of a sudden you're 10,000 less and they don't have the, the difficulty of getting there. I mean, they're already getting yeah. to St. Joe's. I mean, I... This, yes. I'm, I, I am really, really excited. This is, uh, I, I hope it comes to fruition. I, I want to, in you. some way, my, my business, myself, I, I want to, I want to have some sort of part in helping as I had it. Thank you so much. So we do have a benefit dinner coming up. So if you have no plans for St. Patrick's, I would like to advertise, please sure, call please. the school. <laughs> Thank you. We'll what, are you do, what are you doing? Yeah, go ahead. So we're going to have, usually we have a gala. Um, more like in the spring, you know, well into almost May, April, but this time we are doing something different, trying to get ahead of the game with these potential plans. And the idea was to replace a playground, but now with this, you know, we need even more help. Uh, it's going to be on um, March the, oh boy, 16th. <laughs> it's gonna be at St. Leo's, um, fun with music, you know, um, all of these activities and games and it's just to support our little school so i like to invite everyone in the community we have a sponsorship levels so we do have tables 600 dollars a table of eight and if you just contact the school we would love to um to invite anyone who would like to support us to consider attending a fun saint patrick's uh dance march 16. yes march 16. okay Mar you. maria what's your next step after this show is over to help bring a catholic school to martinsburg for high school well, I tell you, I've been praying the devil, you know, extra. I, I usually start my day with a rosary. I've been praying that um, that God will lead the way. I think we've done everything that we could do and provide the, bish the bishop uh, with everything he needed from us. I think um, I would like to share that 11 and 12th grade will be a different model potentially. So we're looking into advanced college and career courses. Um, you know, in partnerships with the local junior colleges. So uh, the 11 and 12 is a different monster than the 9 and 10. And I am not saying we're not going to be a traditional uh, Catholic school. I am just saying that um, higher education is getting almost unaffordable for some families yes. and that we want to, to, you know, gear and get our children a head start so that they can um, advance in course in academics with a model that's been proven in other places. So the next step, we're still going to build a program because I just want to, tell the community, if it doesn't happen this year, it doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, we're planning ahead, whatever this means, whether it is um, maybe to hire a, a you know, administrator that can build the program until the time is right. But I think uh, to do nothing would just be a disservice to our children. I, I think we owe it to our community and the families we have and the ones who are always knocking on our doors. I cannot tell you how many children we have on waiting lists right now that we cannot receive because we're limited in capacity. So I think um, the next steps are to continue to pretend that this is happening Very and to nice. do the next things that we need to do um, to put this in place. Where in Italy are you from? Well, I am not. I am from Peru, but my grandmother was Sicilian. Oh, so we're mine, mine too. <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Do, you, do you know where in Sicily she was from? Oh, my gosh. I can remember that little town, but her name was Maria, just like me. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been told that um, we're similar in temper. Well, oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, what, what was her family name? Yes, Noguera Viale. I like So they were Viales. Yes, we were Viales. So. Well, this was marvelous. And, so, and you, you, you are welcome back at any time with your Sicilian heritage <laughs> on this program. <laughs> Thank you. I Amen. can promise you that. Hey, best Thank of luck you. to you. And Thank and, you so and much, uh, March 16th, where can you find yes. out information again about the March 16th fundraiser? So we are posting this. It's already on our Facebook page. There's a QR code, and all you have to do, um, you know, is scan so that you can sign up for the silent auction, and that gives you um, a number to beat on things. And just to have a night of fun, if nothing else, I think we're reasonable $80 to come to mm -hmm. have a nice dinner or 150 uh, I think if you bring your spouse. So I, I hope that many members of the community decide to join us so that we can uh, tell you what we're doing and what we're planning on doing. Thank so you so much for coming you. in. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you, you too.